Broadcasting from the Gaylord Rockies Resort in Denver, Colorado, Solutions Review is on location at Commvault Go 2019. Brought to you by Commvault. It's Doug Atkinson back here at the Commvault Go Expo Village. Uh, and this is where customers, partners, everybody gets together. We're fortunate to be joined now by Patrick McGrath, who's Director of Product Management at Commvault. Yep. In charge of Activate, which is one of the four pillars of the Commvault solution, which was announced last year uh, in Nashville. Um, what, 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 what has been happening over the past 12 months with, with Activate? How's it going? How's adoption? How's uh, yeah, the solution? So it's, it's actually been very encouraging. So we've actually managed to sell a lot of Activate That's in, a into good the sign. market, which is really good. But I think more importantly for us at the moment, we've learned a lot. Um, and uh, you know we've we've really concentrated on kind of getting the message out to our field and doing direct field enablement. We've taken a look at a lot of feedback that we got around our licensing, uh, and we've now adopted an approach where, you know, before you could only buy Activate as a as a one bundle offering. Now we're actually offering it by use case. Um, so this actually makes it a lot easier for people to kind of get in and solve their immediate problems first. Well, and it's a and it's a. It's a solution that is also being used by Commvault, right? So not only are you the product, yeah, yeah. you're the customer. Right, right. So to sort of re refresh from the last year's discussion, right? we have three use cases that we sell to the market. One is around file storage optimization that really helps us to get insight into what data exists in the wild as well as the data that's, that's managed by Commvault. And we use that to try and figure out data protection strategies or maybe ways of saving money migrating content to the cloud or between clouds. The next one that we've got is sensitive data governance, which really helps with the data privacy regulations that most companies are facing at the moment. Uh, where we can go in and profile the data, create visualizations to prompt action, and we can actually go and remediate uh, uh, that data as well from the source environments and the backups. And the third one is the e-discovery uh, type use case where legal matters for open records requests, freedom of information requests, or, or uh, uh, those kinds of investigations. Um, we need broad access to a lot of different environments um, with backed up data. Um, effectively to provide the, those records to, to those folks. So those are the three use cases that we're really accelerating into the marketplace at the moment. And we use those in Commvault as you would expect, right? But there's a bunch of other use cases. So when we take a look at um, how we're leveraging the platform of Activate, which is separate than the use cases, think about a platform where we've built some content applications on top of it, and those are the three use cases that we're sending to the market. But the Activate platform itself provides access to structured data and unstructured data, from live data, from backup data, and we do an enormous number of things with it. Um, one example that we've really gotten a lot of use out of recently is using Activate platform as uh, really an analytics environment to help uh, shape how we manage our sales pipeline, right? So we can use information that's stored in our marketing silos, in our sales silos with Salesforce, with how we do our fulfillment, and we're about to connect that also to our support systems. So we've got information that's coming from all of those areas, and we're using machine learning effectively to tie you know, it's this individual from this silo, this individual from another silo. We can do things like sentiment analysis. So when we look at our pipeline, we've actually got an idea on where is their negative uh, connotations in the conversations around um, specific deals that we've got. That way we can highlight um, uh, action that's needed. Um, you know, which ones are likely to close, which ones are not likely to close. And so we've kind of uh, developed a bunch of models to be able to support that. That's all developed on the Activate platform as well, right? Uh, that, that's, that's the kind of use case I don't think people would, would, would think to extend themselves toward, but it's, it's an incredibly valuable application, right? I mean, you're talking about well, it really win is. analysis, loss analysis. Yeah, I and, mean, and when you think about it, we talked about this a little bit last year, but we've got... I'd like this solution. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, if you've got a credit card, we can make that happen. <laughs> But, you know, we have a lot of backup administrators and storage administrators that are sitting on top of the biggest data lake their companies will ever have, and they don't know about it. Not only do they not know about it, but it's the best kept secret within their organization exactly. for them to be able to use, right? And with many data lake projects themselves, the formal data lake projects, 
diving into a trough of disillusionment based on a lot of the technical issues, the idea of applying search and analytics across a broad base of data um, that we have access to from the Activate product and the Activate platform gives us an immense number of use cases that we can extend to, right? So we've kind of got a lot of vision around what we want to do with the, with the platform. We're looking to use the three use cases that customers can get immediate value out of as demonstrators for the intelligence that we've got behind the scenes. Um, and, and the other thing that I'd say is we've got customers that are using um, business intelligence tools, the Power BI's, the Tableau's, Right. that are connecting straight into Activate through the API layers, right? So our whole idea here is we have you know, uh, uh, incomparable access to information across an organization. We are profiling that information, we're providing access, governed under the, the access rules for those source systems, right? So there's a governance layer in here, and we can provide access to other use cases as we as we build that forward. This is totally next level, but, it, but I think it's something that people should absolutely consider when they're thinking about a solution is, where am I going? Mm -hmm. You know, how am I going to, and they might not be quite as far along as, as, as you are internally, but the fact that you've baked in this kind of functionality to the, to the Commvault solution is, is... Yeah, I mean, we're really excited about it, right? But I think one thing is Commvault is known as a backup recovery company, and, and uh, with the announcements around uh, Metallic today and, and what we're doing with Hedvig, that we're broadening the value proposition, we're broadening the strategic positioning, um, and, and that actually goes to talking to other stakeholders inside the, the organization beyond a strictly infrastructure play. So Activate really looks inside the data to find the information, to, you know, to drive the insights, to take the action based on information, right? So it's kind of a different flavor um, of uh, strategic positioning. And, and like I say, we've got customers that are, that are really focused on very specific problems today. Those three use cases that I talked about um, are, are, you know, people are using those, they're getting a lot of value out of those today, but there's also the, the hidden gems once they get hooked on, uh, on the products. So with regard to, uh, to lessons that people can take away from our conversation, uh, what kind of advice would you offer to folks that are that are trying to get to the next level, right? They have a yeah. solution, potentially a point solution in place right now. They want to go next level. They want to maybe extend themselves to a platform or a suite. Um, what would you offer for advice as they think about that in moving into 2020? So I think regardless of what technology or what kind of business improvement you want to make, one of the big secrets is to figure out what you actually want to achieve and create some goals for yourself that you can actually uh, accomplish in a reasonable amount of time while you have the attention of the guys with the money bankrolling the projects, right? It's very easy to create a big vision uh, and to deliver on it at a, at a pace that it kind of turns people off, right? right. So what we find is, is we, we get a lot of organizations that approach us because, hey, I'm about to start my big cloud project. I really want to figure out how I can drive efficiencies in that project. We've got folks that are saying, holy moly, we've now got a GDPR-based regulation that comes live in January. Yeah, That's no not a long way away, right? right. So there's a, long, a bunch of these compelling events where people have a very real um, implication or a very real impact for not doing something. So that's actually good for us and the organization that's involved, right? Yeah. But even when you're dealing with something like GDPR, don't try and boil the ocean. Take a look at, at achievable goals so you actually start gaining, A, an understanding of the problem, because that's actually quite hard to do on the offset. B, achieve some results so that you can actually show people that you're making project, uh, progress, and then scale. Um, that to, to, to deal with the others. And that actually, that whole approach of getting those early wins was one of the primary drivers actually for our change in licensing model. Outstanding, well that's excellent advice, certainly advice we would encourage you to take and, uh, and consider going into 2020. Patrick, thanks for making some time. Oh, my pleasure. Appreciate you. you swinging by. Yeah. Good to see you again and best of luck uh, in 2020. Thanks so much.